tell me a bit about the history of the business. Well, the business has been around for quite some time. A lot of people don't actually know that. Uh, my, my father was originally, he was a financial advisor. My history was very, very different. Uh, I left school, I was a musician and um, uh, really couldn't afford to feed myself for the two years where I was there and uh, got into finance because people in finance have money. Um, that was a pretty simple connection to make. But then I found that, you know, I really fell in love with numbers and had a, a real skill set with numbers and a real skill set uh, with structures and um, and kind of fell in love with you know the more complex side of the equation and became an investment banker and got into funds management both here and here and offshore and um, uh, and didn't really like the ethics of the industry and that that kind of brought me back to Australia and a few things happened in life that gave me a lot of perspective and uh, so I left finance for a little while because I, I didn't enjoy the people that I was interacting with and didn't really enjoy the the ethics of the industry at that point in time and um, I started up a marketing company and a kite surfing tour company uh, which uh, marketing was really consultancy on structure and and things like that and for people in the finance field and my father still had a practice he was getting on in age and uh, and reached out for help and and uh, so I came in and started helping him out with systemizing the business and um, and you know, uh, providing resources to, to grow it and, and things like that. So originally when we started that that uh, that business, uh, you know, that was about six six years ago, but he had the business for 35 years beforehand. Uh, so I guess the business was really founded on kind of family values and, um, and you know, a father and son team effectively. So why the rebrand? We've gone through uh, we've gone through a few different rebrands. <laughs> when when first came in and, and knew that I was going to help Tony out uh, with his business, we uh, we had, it was called Fenton Financial, and that was you know a legacy of, of him, and it made sense at that point in time. You know, two Fentons kind of working together, and uh, we we fast changed the branding though because my my background and understanding search engines and and the World Wide Web is what we used to call it back then. Uh, we changed it to Mornington Financial because we were effectively, you know, a family business that was servicing the local community, you know, family values, local values, serving the local community. And uh, by rebranding to Mornington Financial, we were able to optimise our, our search engines and, and serve people in the local community. And people in the local community could find us very easily, you know, businesses, businesses and busy professionals could find us easily. And we, we held that number one ranking on on Google for a long time without paying for it just by the interaction that we had with our clients. Um, so we rebranded to Mornington Financial, but then the business grew. Uh, Tony moved out of the business and uh, and we you know grew considerably from there to have clients, uh, busy professionals and uh, and business owners both in the local area but around Australia and even you know we have clients offshore. Uh, you know, we still stand for exactly the same things, but uh, you know, our client base had grown uh, and it changed a little bit over time as well. So we realized that Mornington Financial wasn't necessarily you know, the, the right name for the business. So we went to Finside Advice and spent two years uh, in preparation for that. And uh, so we got the trademark from IP Australia um, and uh, then proceeded to change our name. So we did everything right but we just ended up in a very unfortunate situation where there was a global company, Finsight uh, Inc, I think in, in the US, large firm in the, in the US, and they had uh, a global patent that hadn't been lodged in Australia, and so IP Australia gave us the, the trademark and then revoked us, uh, revoked the trademark, and uh, effectively we had a little bit of a, a, a push and shove with, with the global company, but you know we don't have the resources to be able to fight that, and. Uh, although I loved the name, Financial Insight is what Finsight stood for and you know we, we loved it and spent so much time going in that direction. Uh, you know, it, uh, we, we, our hand was forced a little bit, but going back to, to Fenton Financial, you know, I always didn't like to be the brand of the business and I always thought that the business had to exist by itself. But if you think about where the business came from and the, you know, the integrity and the values uh, you know, of our name is you know, even going back to Clyde Fenton, the, you know, the great flying doctor and Freddie Fenton, you know, the eye surgeon, you know, our name in history actually stands a lot for integrity, for sort of philanthropic behavior and, uh, and you know, doing the right thing uh, by people no matter what the circumstances. So 
as much as I was resisting it from a personal perspective and not wanting to rebrand it uh, because it felt like it was about me, it's not about me, it's about uh, you know, what's, what that name has stood for over time. So getting really comfortable with it now and, and know that that's gonna stand for a long time into the future, which is, uh, which is both exciting and sometimes a little bit scary, to be honest. What is Fenton Financial all about and where are you going? Where we started to where we got to now, you know, from a values perspective, we're still we're still the same business. Um, but you know, we we we're here to serve busy professionals and business owners. You know, we want to become one of the benchmarks in Australia for service and advice. And the industry has had, you know, a bad rap and deservedly so. You know, in my opinion, and I'm quite vocal in it. There's been some operators in this business that have no business being in this business. You know. Um, I think from an ethics perspective, and that's very high on my radar, I, 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 I'm the, people who are just salespeople in this industry, I think that it's a good thing that they're being weeded out. And you know, with the Royal Banking Commission, you know, none of that was surprising to see that. And one of, that was one of the reasons I got out of the industry you know, to begin with, um, and then had to fall in love with numbers again, uh, was because of that ethics, because of that substandard advice, because of people you know, not re really having something that they you know, deserve and need. And as business owners, it's our job to create products and services that are of value to our clients. And whatever that measure of value is, uh, you know, I, there, was a, there was a video I just watched recently, a guy called Frank Kern, I love the way that he said it. He said, imagine if you started a business and you couldn't get paid Right? You couldn't get paid until the client actually received value from it. I love that as a concept because it's almost kind of how we work. You know, we don't get paid for a long time into the process and we, we do that unintentionally on that basis. We, well, it was intentional that we wanted to provide value, but it was unintentional for that, for that sort of link. And you know, I think that we want to, well not I think, we definitely want to create the benchmark for service with our clients. Now we're a small company and we're, and you were scaling and we're trying to keep the values of the business, the integrity of the business um, and provide service levels and knowledge that is superior to what we think a below par average is. Uh, so our goal as a business is really to, to lift the integrity, to bring more value to our clients, to provide solutions that they feel are, are, are wonderful solutions and are, are, that are good solutions and that you know actually change their lives and, and get them to where they're going. And a lot of people say those sorts of things, but that, that's really our benchmark. That's why we have the one thing each year. That's why we continue to, to ask you know, probing questions of clients to make sure that we can keep them on track so that they can ultimately live their life by design. So, and we're not joking, like, I want to change the benchmark of the industry. Um, we want to lift it to a level where, you know, the base level of where we operate is the base level of the industry. So that when people think about financial services, people think about advisors and their team of advisors, they either think about us or they're, they're not afraid of it. They, the Royal Banking Inquiry is, is it a thing of the past and they, they look forward to their interactions. They, they're not scared of it, they actually embrace it. And you know, when we get the industry to that point in time and inflict that level of change and that, that sort of societal change and emotional change, then we'll have started to, to begin our journey. And you know, that's what we stand for as a business. What are you most excited about? Now, oh, you know, it, God, there's so much. I think everywhere the, the, the industry is changing or all industries are changing so rapidly. Uh, and although it's tough when you're in business, it's really tough because you're constantly having to evolve. You're constantly having to change things. Sometimes you, we implement things and we, we, before we even implement them, they're redundant. So we promise to deliver it and then we go, okay, we have to go back on that promise because it's no longer valid. But that's the exciting thing for me, you know, the, the, the advent of social media, the, the, the advent of technology, you know, reducing friction, you know, in financial services is something which I'm excited about. You know, there is still so much bureaucracy, so much paperwork, so much compliance, but where I'm excited about going is being able to have the true re, uh, interactions with clients, being able to speak at a values-based level with clients and really constructing their life by design without any of the friction. You know, being able to have, uh, I've, I've talked about it before, but I, I see it pretty close now, you know, being able to literally have maybe, 
you know, an earthquake go off in Japan, being able to see that on the news in the morning, be able to have know exactly which clients have stocks that are affected in the portfolio, have them automatically pinged on their mobile phones, have quick little teleconferences with them in the morning, you know, before any of this sort of stuff is even gotten onto the morning news and be able to start to react to that. And that's just from a financial perspective, but then having tools and, and other things like what you know, I do for myself, I've got a program, uh, PH360, which deals with genetics and tells you, you know, when to eat and when to be sleeping and when your optimum brain functional time is. But you know, being able to pull these things into our clients' lives and have them operate symbiotically with each other. So not just having a symbiotic relationship of accounting, finance, mortgage broking, um, and creating transparency and cracking the code so that people actually see that that stuff's innately simple and so that they understand their full world there. So they're not scared of it anymore, but they understand it and they embrace it. And there's no friction, you know, there's no mounds of paperwork. It happens looking at the phone, you know, different types of factor authentication so that we can seamlessly do this stuff in the background. Um, and then have the conversations about, well, how do we link this into, you know, people's lifestyle? How do we you know, take this genetic predisposition of a person's um, physiological makeup and how do we integrate this into, you know, the world of finance and make things better for them, make their world operate better. So not just making financial change, not just making physiological change, but, you know, it's a full mental shift as well. So you know, I'm excited about technology going in that direction and, and I'm excited about having the capacity to be able to embrace that technology and change as the world changes to be able to you know, really change you know, the people that we interact with. Um, you know, it, it's, it's exciting, you know, embracing that change, it's scary and it's really challenging. But when you look into the future, the things that it can provide for us, the things that, and the, and the kind of change that we can create with it is, you know, is I just sit in awe thinking about it at times. I, and that, that, that I'm excited about, because that is changing things. You know, that's changing the way that the world operates. Anything left unsaid? Uh, well, yeah, I guess, you know, for, for all of our clients, we're, we're still the same, we're still here. Instead of FinSight Advice in the center, it's Fenton Financial, it's still me, it's still Nada, Becky, the team, Razor, it's still all of us. Um, people will come and go at different points in time. Uh, but you know we're, we still hold the same values, we're still the same place, we are growing and now you probably have an understanding or a bit better understanding of, of where we see the future. Hopefully that excites you. Um, and there's a lot that's going to be coming too, which I'm very, very excited about. Uh, and, I, and I hope that you guys are as well and, and, and are willing to embrace it. And, and we love your support on the journey and, and your feedback as well. Uh, so please embrace the name change. We're gonna put uh, at the bottom of the email that you'll be getting on this, how to white label our new email addresses. So if you can go through and do that so you can make sure that you get our uh, communication. For those of you who might be watching this who are not part of the business, uh, you know, busy professionals or business owners that might be seeing this on social media because we'll be putting it out there. Uh, you know, all I can say is look, if, if you're curious about anything that we've had to say or you're aligned with where we believe the world's going and wanna jump on the journey or, or even just wanna have a conversation, just shoot me a message, uh, I'll respond back or, or one of my team will and we'll end up just having a conversation. Uh, hopefully some of this has resonated with all of you uh, and we'll look forward to Fenton Financial being a greater part in, in your life and, and many other people's lives in the future.